hypothetical train murder, ruinous romantic confessions, and twisted canine sagas. These are just a few of the wild revelations that have been exposed when celebs have been hooked up to lie detectors. Donald Trump's former attorney, Michael Cohen, reportedly warned In Touch not to publish its 2011 interview with adult film star Stormy Daniels. Even though Daniels took a polygraph test to corroborate her claims that she had a sexual encounter with Trump, the magazine's publisher backed off. But then Trump was elected president. When it was revealed that Cohen had paid Daniels $130,000 in hush money, In Touch decided to finally print its interview in 2018. Daniels claimed that she and Trump had sex once after meeting at a golf tournament. They kept in touch afterward, and she later hung out with him again at the Beverly Hills Hotel. She also revealed that they watched Shark Week and that the future president was obsessed with sharks. In her 2018 memoir, Full Disclosure, Daniels revealed that she also told an InTouch editor about something that she didn't mention during the interview. As it turned out, she spanked Trump with a copy of a magazine that featured his likeness on the cover. After their initial phone conversation, the editor told Daniels that her story was so unbelievable that she'd have to take a lie detector test. CNN later obtained a copy of the polygraph report, which stated, In the opinion of this examiner, Daniels is truthful about having unprotected vaginal intercourse with Donald Trump in July 2006. Ahead of the season 9 premiere of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills in 2019, Radar reported that Dorit Kemsley decided that she no longer wanted a puppy that she'd adopted from Vanderpump Dogs. So Kemsley gave the dog, named Lucy Lucy Applejuice, away to someone else. But that person then dropped Lucy off at a shelter. Lucy's microchip was linked to Vanderpump Dogs, and Lisa Vanderpump wasn't exactly happy about how bad it looked that one of her organization's animals ended up at a shelter. Vanderpump's Real Housewives castmates concluded that she'd leaked Lucy's sad tale to Radar in an effort to shame Kemsley. However, Radar denied this. Puppygate became a major plotline on the show, with Vanderpump being accused of using it to manipulate her fellow housewives. So Vanderpump decided to take a polygraph test, and it revealed that she was telling the truth when she denied leaking the story to Radar. But she also used the test as an opportunity to take a swipe at Kemsley. You think Dorit's face has changed in the last <laughs> year as much as her accent? I had to throw that one in. When Johnny Knoxville and Jessica Simpson co-starred in 2005's The Dukes of Hazzard, they were both married to other people, but that didn't prevent rumors of romance. And Knoxville was challenged to address those rumors head-on when he stopped by The Howard Stern Show. Knoxville was hooked up to a lie detector as he was asked a series of questions about Simpson. And it was confirmed that he was being truthful when he said that he didn't have sex with her. However, the polygraph examiner determined that he was possibly lying when he said that he never kissed his co-star, and when he was asked if he thought that she was an idiot, his denial was also deemed a lie. In her memoir, Open Book, Simpson revealed that she felt guilty about her feelings for Knoxville at the time, claiming that they had an emotional affair. In 2004, Omarosa Manigault Newman made a notorious name for herself during the first season of the Donald Trump-hosted reality show The Apprentice. When she stopped by The View that year, she claimed that one of her fellow contestants hated her and called her a racial slur. She didn't reveal the name of this person, but she hinted that it was Erica Vitrini. After Vitrini denied this during her own interview on The View, Newman argued that Vitrini had basically admitted guilt by agreeing to appear on the show to defend herself. To prove her innocence, Vitrini took a polygraph test on The Howard Stern Show, and it showed that she was telling the truth when she denied using the slur. Newman was then scheduled to appear on Jimmy Kimmel Live following Vitrini's test. Coincidentally, Kimmel had planned a sketch for that same episode that involved hooking his Uncle Frank up to a fake polygraph machine. Newman saw the rig and assumed that the host was planning to interrogate her without warning. As Kimmel recalled to The Daily Beast in 2018, she stormed out of there and the show was live, so we had no guest. She was very angry. But he also admitted that he was relieved that he didn't have to interview her. Before Todd Chrisley was sent to prison, he was essentially living a lie. While he led Chrisley Knows Best viewers to believe that he'd obtained his lavish lifestyle through honest means, he was actually defrauding banks and bilking the IRS. More of his deception was exposed when he was hooked up to a polygraph for a 2016 episode of his reality show. He conveniently wasn't asked about his finances, though some of the questions were nevertheless quite memorable. Did you really have sex with a girl on Nanny's recliner and break it because you hit it too hard? Yes. That affirmative was indeed deemed truthful. Todd's daughter Savannah wanted to know if he'd ever had a sexually transmitted disease, and the examiner revealed that his denial was a lie. I got crabs when I was 16 years old from the football coach's daughter. I had to go to the Repco uh, nine miles away so that the pharmacist would not know us. 
For many viewers, the most surprising revelation was surely that Savannah isn't actually her dad's favorite kid. That's heartbreaking. Millie Bobby Brown's first kiss was a rather strange experience. In 2016, she admitted to Interview Magazine that she'd never kissed a boy before she was required to do so while in character as Eleven on Stranger Things. She was just Eleven when she puckered up with her co-star Finn Wolfhard. As she recalled, It was kind of weird. Finn reacted quite well, and I didn't. The topic came up again in 2022 when Brown was taking the Vanity Fair lie detector test and she was asked if Wolfhard was a lousy kisser. When she answered that he is, she was then asked if his skills have improved since their first lip lock. Not with me, no. Her responses were determined to be truthful. Wolfhard got his own chance to respond during a 2023 appearance on The Drew Barrymore Show as he admitted that he really didn't know what he was doing at the time. So I just like, kind of just like, almost like head butter. Yeah. <laughs> When Shawn Mendes took the Vanity Fair lie detector test in 2021, he admitted that he's lied to his girlfriend, Camila Cabello, though he didn't elaborate on what he was dishonest about. He also admitted to being friend-zoned by her before they got together. Still, the polygraph examiner determined that he was telling the truth when he claimed that everything was fine between the two of them. Mendes was also asked about another celebrity couple, specifically Taylor Swift and Joe Alwyn. He looks like a sweet guy. The lie detector determined that that was in fact a lie. Getting caught left Mendez a bit flustered, though he did his best to explain why he didn't really believe what he just said. He's kind of got a little bit of a villain look about him. He's got really blue eyes, and I struggle with, like, eyes that blue. Mendez also confessed something about one of Swift's other exes, as it bothered him that Harry Styles didn't follow him back on Instagram. In 2015, Tori Spelling put herself in the hot seat for an hour-long lifetime television event called Tori Spelling Celebrity Lie Detector. While strapped up to a polygraph, she was asked if she'd ever hooked up with any of her Beverly Hills 90210 castmates. She fessed up to falling in love with Brian Austin Green, who had a rather strange way of flirting with her. And he would come up and like pull on my peach fuzz, and he'd be like, oh my gosh, you're like a little lamb chop, you're like my Chewbacca. <laughs> Spelling also claimed that she hooked up with Jason Priestley, as she explained. It was offset. It was our version of a summer romance. While the polygraph showed Spelling's answers to be honest, Priestley refused to corroborate its findings, as he tweeted, I'm not getting into this. It's nobody's business either way. As for Green, he downplayed the seriousness of his relationship with Spelling during a 2019 appearance on Watch What Happens Live. We hooked up. <laughs> yeah. we, we did, but it was we were young and it was... So that's what young people do. <laughs> the following year, Spelling admitted on the Women on Top podcast that she was trying to reminisce with Green about their romance, and she learned that their memories differed. She recalled the two of them declaring their love for one another, while Green didn't. When Kate Hudson took the Vanity Fair lie detector test in 2022, it was administered by her Glass Onion co-star Janelle Monet, who chose to dig up some dirt about Hudson's on-screen kisses. Hudson had high praise for her almost famous co-star, Billy Crudup, especially compared to Matthew McConaughey. I think Billy is a gentler kisser. <laughs> Hudson later had to confront McConaughey during an Instagram Live marking the 20th anniversary of How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, but instead of critiquing him, she suggested that his kissing capabilities often weren't the issue when a scene called for the actors to lock lips. As she put it, we're always in weird environments. McConaughey agreed as he pointed out that the conditions they were expected to kiss in while shooting fool's gold were less than ideal. For example, in one scene, they were in the ocean and had just swam up to the surface, which indeed doesn't exactly sound like the most comfortable scenario. The 2021 Netflix special Jonas Brothers Family Roast brought out some big guns to roast the brothers, including Saturday Night Live alum Pete Davidson. The comedian made some off-color jokes about Joe Jonas and his wife Sophie Turner's love life, one of which involved the Stark family motto on Game of Thrones of Winter is Coming. Turner then got in on the fun herself by joking about the brothers' purity rings and Davidson's womanizing reputation. Joe, don't wait up. Pete Davidson slipped me his phone number, so… Joe could have tried to exact revenge on Davidson when he took the Vanity Fair lie detector test, though he chose not to. He also admitted to believing that he's the Kim Kardashian of his family when he was asked if he would follow in her footsteps by dating Davidson. But when he was asked if he would date her ex-husband Kanye West, he insisted, No. Definitely not. Joe even said that he believed that keeping up with the Kardashians was better than his brother Kevin's own e-reality show, Married to Jonas. He also admitted to using the Raya dating app and sliding into the DMs of about 10 women, including Turner. And as it turned out, he tossed his purity ring in the trash. 
Jennifer Lawrence has a reputation for being endearingly goofy during interviews, like when she kept it real with Kim Kardashian by joking about the phallic shape of one of her KKW beauty makeup brushes. Or when she snuck up on Taylor Swift at the 2014 Golden Globes and told her, I was going to come in and push you down the stairs. I was like, she'll crack up. When Lawrence was hooked up to the Vanity Fair lie detector test in 2018, her confessions took a dark turn when she was presented with a hypothetical situation. If she pushed a single person in front of a train, it would save the lives of multiple others. It would be psychotic not to. In fact, every time I'm in the subway, I always think about pushing people on the tracks. I don't do it, I don't get tempted to do it. After the polygraph examiner revealed that she was being truthful, Lawrence joked, I'm so happy that that was confirmed with the polygraph that I'm a psychopath. <laughs> I don't want to do it. Just to be on the safe side, though, we'll have to beg Taylor Swift never to take a subway ride with Lawrence. When Niall Horan joined James Corden for a carpool karaoke segment on The Late Late Show in 2020, the former One Directioner also took a polygraph exam in the car. The first question was whether or not he and his bandmates would ever get back together. The audience cheered wildly when Horan answered in the affirmative, and his response turned out to be honest. A few more interviews would later give fans even more hope of the band reuniting for the first time since their 2015 breakup. When Liam Payne appeared on Capital FM in December 2020, he confessed, I'm hoping we've got a lot more to, to come from us. Louis Tomlinson echoed those sentiments during a 2022 appearance on the British talk show Lorraine when he said, There's a lot of moving parts, but it would be a shame if we didn't. I hope so. As for Harry Styles, he discussed the topic on the Spout podcast in 2022. I think, I think if there's a, a, a moment for us to do it in the right way, I think it'd be great. Speaking of styles, the tables were turned on Corden when he was hooked up to the polygraph and Horan got to interrogate him. Corden reluctantly but truthfully admitted that he prefers Styles' song Sign of the Times to Horan's single Slow Hands, but he was also being honest when he revealed that Horan is his favorite member of the band. For a 2018 episode of Carpool Karaoke the series, Hailey Bieber and Kendall Jenner went for a ride and got hooked up to a polygraph. Jenner fessed up to creating a secret Instagram account for the sole purpose of keeping tabs on an ex, though her friend didn't ask her which guy she was stalking. When it was Bieber's turn in the hot seat, the conversation turned to her pop star husband. Does Justin think I'm cool? <laughs> of course. Alas, that turned out to be a lie, but at least the two pals were still able to laugh hysterically. There was a time that Jenner thought that her bestie's husband was pretty cool, as she told W Magazine in 2016. Justin Bieber was like the pop star of my time. I feel like I must have had a 12-year-old crush on him. Not anymore, though. When Jenner scored a Vogue cover that same year, Justin wrote on Instagram, Congrats, Ken, you look beautiful. There was even a time when Kendall and Justin sparked dating rumors because they were hanging out together so often, though she denied that they were anything more than friends during a 2014 Nightline interview. And apparently she's now totally cool with him, no longer thinking that she's cool. In 2020, TikTok power couple Dixie D'Amelio and Noah Beck took a lie detector test together on The Early Late Show. But first, she had a question for the polygraph expert, John, as she wanted to know if a couple ever broke up while he was monitoring their responses. That's what I'm hoping for this time. The illuminating exam took an awkward turn when Beck asked D'Amelio if she could picture the two of them getting married. He looked somewhat taken aback when she said no, which actually turned out to be a lie. Before learning this, Beck asked if he was wasting his time with D'Amelio insisting that that wasn't the case, though she began to get a bit flustered. When she claimed that she'd never thought about breaking up with him, this turned out to be a fib. It was one time. It was one time. And I told you. To be fair, though, it turned out that he lied about the same thing. I didn't know you wanted to break up with me. Beck also lied when he said that he didn't find D'Amelio intimidating, though he told the truth when he admitted that she annoyed him, much to her annoyance. The couple couldn't quit bickering while learning the results of the exam. Their relationship initially survived the lie detector test, but in November 2022, it was reported that they'd split. When Kiki Palmer took the Vanity Fair lie detector test in 2019, it turned into a legendary meme. When she was asked if she believed that her Nickelodeon character True Jackson would be a better vice president of the United States than former Veep Dick Cheney, she was unable to answer the question. I don't know who this man is. I mean, he could be walking down the street. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know a thing. Sorry to this man. The polygraph expert confirmed that Palmer wasn't lying about being totally clueless about George W. Bush's second-in-command, but Palmer definitely knew who the current VP was in 2022 when she spoke to Kamala Harris during the Essence Festival of Culture. Harris had also recently become a meme after calling her running mate Joe Biden when he was elected president in 2020. We did it! We did it, Joe! 
Palmer reenacted that moment, much to Harris's delight. That same year, the actor told Vanity Fair that she never bothered looking up Cheney after hearing what others were saying about him. As she put it, I left him where he was at. I hate to say that. It seems like he wasn't worth me doing the research on.